Now we are going to discuss carcinoma of the endometrium. Carcinoma of the endometrium or endometrial carcinoma is the most invasive cancer of the female genital tract. It occurs at high frequency and seen in mainly in postmenopausal women because these cancers are responsible for causing abnormal postmenopausal bleeding. Their detection is early. Endometrial carcinoma are divided into type 1 endometrial carcinoma and type 2 endometrial carcinoma. Type 1 endometrial carcinoma are the most common type and about 80% of all cases are of this type. They are well differentiated and they simulate proliferative endometrial glands and are referred to as endometroid carcinoma. They arise in the setting of endometrial hyperplasia and like endometrial hyperplasia they are associated with following factors number one factor which is responsible is obesity it is seen that that enzyme aromatase is present in the adipose tissue which converts androtenidione produced by the adrenals to estrogen or estron so is a stimulus for the endometrial glands to proliferate it is seen in various studies that the risk of endometrial carcinoma is increased about 10 to 15 percent in obese patients. About 30 percent of the cases in which endometrial carcinoma is seen at a younger age are obese people or obese females. Tamoxifen which is given for the treatment of the breast cancer in order to block estrogen receptors they uh, this drug stimulate estrogen receptors in the uterus then replacement when we give estrogen replacement therapy in postmenopausal women it should not be given without progesterone otherwise there is going to be an imbalance females who have never been pregnant or who have got continuous anovulatory cycles they are more prone to suffer from endometrial carcinoma condition which is known as lynch syndrome or hereditary non polyposis colorectal carcinoma has got a high risk of developing cancers of the colon and other organs menarche it has been seen that early menarche or late menarche they are important risk factor for the carcinoma of the endometrium because in both of the cases there is long exposure of estrogen which the endometrium is having i mean to say that endometrium is exposed to the long exposure of the estrogen in these patients similarly parity it has been observed that nulli parity or the lady who has got one child has more chances of developing carcinoma of the endometrium whereas the lady with with many children has got comparatively less chances of developing carcinoma of the endometrium with the result parity plays a role or in short i can say with low parity developing endometrial carcinoma is more now genetic mutations like PTN mutations, or which is a tumor suppressor gene. It is seen that 30 to 80 percent of endometrioid carcinoma are associated with this gene. Then there is another oncogene, which is PIK3CA, which encodes the catalytic subunit of PI3K and are responsible for 40 percent of the endometrioid carcinoma. But this mutation is rarely seen in the atypical endometrial hyperplasia which suggests that it plays a role in the invasion of the cancer. Certain mutations which activate KRAS also stimulate PIK3 AKT signaling are seen in 20% of endometrial carcinoma. Then there is an other mutation which is loss of function mutation in ARID1A, a regulator of chromatin structure is seen in one third of the tumors. It is also seen that ARID1A is also frequently undergo mutation in ovarian endometrioid and clear cell carcinomas which is seen within the endometriosis. The exact role is not clear but loss of ARID1A function also enhances P13K ATK signaling pathway. Now P53. Loss of functions mutation in TP53 
are present in 50% of poorly differentiated carcinoma, suggesting that the functions are lacking in well-differentiated endometrioid carcinomas. So these mutations are thought to be the late events in tumor progression. Type 1 endometrial carcinoma. In this case, the age is around 55 to 65 years. There is unopposed estrogen stimulation. The patient is obese, suffering from hypertension and diabetes. The morphology of the tumor is mostly well differentiated and we call it as endometroid. Usually the precursor lesion is hyperplasia. Mutations, various mutations I have already discussed that is PTN, PI. 3CA, KRAS, ARIDA1 mutation. The tumor is not that aggressive as compared to type 2 and spreads via lymphatics. Now type 2 endometrial carcinoma seen at a older age group as compared to that of type 1 and the age is around 65 to 75 years. The patient is thin and lean. The morphology of the tumor is either serous, clear cell or malarian mixed tumor. Precursor lesion is mostly serous endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma genetic mutation is p53 tumor is aggressive intraperitoneal and lymphatic spread is common clinical features i've already discussed uh, various risk factors like obesity late menopause nulliparity and unopposed estrogen stimulation either by exogenous or endogenous source. The most important feature is abnormal uterine bleeding which is mostly postmenopausal. And if you do the ultrasound and CT scanning, the most important finding is the thickness of the endometrium is increased. Now gross examination. If we see that the uterus is gross enlargement is seen in the corpus, in the body of the uterus, the endometrium is diffusely thickened, but the tumor may present as a polypidal mass which is soft, tanned, white, and it is friable. Microscopic features. The most common type is the type 1 and it's also called endometrioid carcinoma. In this case, the glands are crowded, lying back to back against each other with very little stroma and most of the glands show complex branching. The nuclei which are lining these glands show loss of polarity, meaning thereby they have got prominent nucleoli, they show condensation of the nuclear membrane or also there is pleomorphism of the nuclei. These glands infiltrate into the myometrium and also show desmoplastic reaction. Regarding the grading of the tumor, we say that if uh, less than 5% there are solid areas, we call it as grade 1. And if the solid areas are between 5 to 50%, it means that glandular differentiation is less than 50% of the tumor area where rest of the tumor uh, is in a solid pattern we call it as grade 2 if the differentiation of the glands is less than 50% we call it as grade 3 but on the other hand cytological ATP is marked and there is uh, the grade 1 tumor we just label it as grade 2 tumor. Schemus element may be present in the tumor and this schemus element may be benign or malignant. The schemus element is composed of schemus cells with intercellular bridges, well-defined borders, eosinophilic cytoplasm and formation of keratin pulse. Please consider that this schemus element is not regarded as the solid component. The solid component, when I say it means that it depends upon the presence of uh, the solid component is basically regarded as 
the presence of glands and neoplastic uh, cells which are present in groups or sheets. At times, the, there is a formation of a willow glandular pattern which is the most common pattern seen in this tumor and there are short blunt villi which are lined by cells. The description of the cells I have already discussed with you and uh, they show uh, psychological atypia. If a female takes hormone therapy already suffering from adenocarcinoma, some of the cells show secretory activity. Rather, some of the glands they show secretory activity and we label it under secretory adenocarcinoma. Now the various features of type 2 adenocarcinoma I have already uh, discussed with you but there are certain histological patterns like serous carcinoma uh, which is found in uh, type 2 endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial adenocarcinoma. The females, they are uh, above 60 years of age, as we know that it's a type 2 endometrial carcinoma, and this tumor is preceded by atrophic endometrium or uh, endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma. There are thick papillae which are lined by nuclei showing marked pleomorphism, and uh, they have got cellular stratification and then there is uh, extensive hemorrhages and tumor necrosis, it's a grade 2 or grade 3 carcinoma, which has got a poor prognosis. The other histological subtype which is seen in type 2 endometrial carcinoma is a clear cell carcinoma and uh, that is preceded by atrophic endometrium and it's a high grade tumor. There are many papillary structures or and glandular structures which are mixed and solid pattern is also seen. Cells, they are of uh, high grade, uh, show marked cellular atypia. There is pleomorphism and uh, they have got uh, clear cytoplasm and there are hobnail type of uh, nuclei which means uh, hobnail cells in which uh, uh, nuclei of uh, atypical cells, they just project into the uh, glandular lumen. Then there is a mucinous adenocarcinoma, which is diagnosed only when 50% or more than 50% of the tumor cells show mucinous uh, production. Or similarly, squamous cell carcinoma is a rare primary tumor and should uh, only be diagnosed when uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix is ruled out and when both patterns are present or when these present are present or if uh, then we call it as mixed carcinoma. Now the next topic is malignant mixed malarian tumor. They are also called carcinosarcomas because the endometrial component of glands as well as the mesenchymal stoma they are both malignant. Some of the tumor cells contain stromal sarcoma or leiomyosarcoma, while others contain heterogeneous malignant cells like rhabdomyosarcoma or chondrosarcoma. The epithelial and stromal component appear to be derived from the same founding cell, a concept supported by molecular studies showing that the presence of number of shared mutations. Mutations found in malignant mixed malarian tumors, they are almost the same genes like uh, P53 and uh, PIK3CA uh, which are seen in other type 2 endometrial carcinoma. Morphologically, these tumors are often bulky or polypoidal in shape which are protruding through the external os. Histological examination shows that they consist of uh, adenocarcinoma which may be endometroid, serous, clear cell type or having a mixed pattern and that tumor is present along with that of uh, uh, a sarcomatoid element. The sarcomatoid element also sometimes simulate extra uterine tissues which are striated muscle, uh, cartilage, adipose tissue, bone. So metastasis uh, contain only one epithelial component. Again, malignant mixed malarian tumor are responsible for postmenopausal bleeding. Only five year survival rate are seen in 20 to 30% of the patients. Clinical staging, well, whether we are dealing with type one or type two adenocarcinoma or mixed malarian tumor, it remains the same. Stage one, the tumor is confined to the uterus, 
stage two it involves the body of the uterus and uh, cervix and stage three it extends outside the uterus but not to the true pelvis and stage four that it extends through the true pelvis or involves the mucosa of the bladder and the rectum. Regarding the diagnosis of these tumors, well, endometrial biopsy is the answer and also one can see by CT scanning, but the gold standard is endometrial biopsy.